I'm joined today with uh, Lewis Smith from Canada Safety Council. Lewis, thanks for taking some time to talk to me today. My pleasure, Jace. Thanks for having me. So as we head into the new year, uh, Canada Safety Council is reminding people that winter driving uh, requires extra caution. And the first kind of tip I saw was that people need to kind of adjust their driving habits for the winter. Is that correct? Yeah, absolutely. You know, it's a pretty common phenomenon that we see from year over year, and especially with COVID-19 changing how a lot of us are driving and a lot of us are approaching Canadian roadways. Um, the, the driving habits tend to fall a little by the wayside because when there's no snow on the roads, when there's no ice on the roads, they tend to be a little bit more forgiving. So we feel that this is an important time to bring that reminder to the forefront of Canadians' minds that with the roads being a bit more slick, a bit more treacherous, it's important to leave a bit more distance, to uh, slow down a little bit, and just try and do what we can to mitigate the impact of the weather. And even before people leave and head out on the road, they should kind of be preparing, looking what the weather conditions are going to be like before they leave, stuff like that? Yeah, absolutely. You know, if, if you're going on a trip that's even a few minutes long, uh, blowing snow, uh, severe weather conditions, hail, they can all play a big part in the driving experience and can cause havoc on the roads. So if a trip is not essential, if it's not absolutely crucial that you head out and the weather is announcing itself to be maybe not great or you know progressively getting worse, it might not be a bad idea to consider delaying or even canceling the trip. And winter tires is another thing that people talk about and they're not too sure if they should get them, when they should get them and what the benefits are. So can you talk just a little bit about uh, winter tires? Yeah, absolutely. Winter tires are one of those issues that are still contentious. And frankly, I'm not quite clear on why. All the data supports the fact that they are an invaluable tool for safety in every Canadian's toolbox, in every motorist's toolbox. Uh, they're proven to uh, slow braking speeds by as much as 25%. Um, they are so effective on slick surfaces, on hard packed snow, on ice. And the real advantage to them is the rubber compound with which they're made. Because as a result of the type of rubber that they use, uh, they're able to grip more effectively and they're able to slow you quick more quickly. So while we can talk about the advantages and disadvantages of paying the cost for them, because obviously winter tires do cost, they're not free, of course, yeah. stands to reason. But um, when we're talking about this kind of issue, winter tires go a long way in the sense that you don't need them when you buy them. But when you do need them, you're sure glad you have them. And when it comes to vehicle maintenance and other ways that people, obviously winter tires is a way to uh, winterize your vehicle. But what are some other ways that people can winterize their vehicle to make sure that they're staying safe while on the road? In this case, with winterizing vehicles, we're talking about anything that can keep you safe in the event of something that may go wrong. So we're talking about making sure that your battery is fully charged. We're making sure that our windshield wiper uh, reservoirs are fully topped up. We're making sure that our windshield wipers are in proper operating condition. And uh, in many cases, a lot of windshield wipers have specific categories for ice and for snow. So we want to make sure that we're able to keep our vision as clear as possible as well. Things like that will go a long way toward making sure that uh, unexpected situations don't turn catastrophic. And it's also important for people to have an emergency kit or a kit in their vehicle of some supplies in case something does happen on the road. What kind of stuff should they have in that kit? And anything that can help keep them safe and keep them comfortable until they can be found and rescued. So in this case, we're talking about smaller things like first aid kits for sure, but also things like uh, food uh, that can be preserved, you know, that, that won't necessarily go bad if it's stored in your car for a long time. You can talk about having water on hand, flashlights and any kind of visibility tool like a flare gun, for instance. Um, anything that can provide traction for your wheels. If you get caught in a divot or in a, uh, in a spot where you need that little bit of extra push to get the car out of it. Uh, all those kinds of things can come back and be life-saving in cases where you are stranded out in the middle of nowhere with no cell phone reception, no ability to immediately get in contact with anyone. And even in the cases where you're not stranded in the middle of nowhere, it's always a good idea to have a fully charged cell phone available so that you can access that, uh, that cell network if it's needed. And I think we went through a few different uh, tips for people that are driving, but is there anything else that you want to add that we didn't get to discuss yet? I, I think the number one tip that I would give to any Canadian driver watching is patience is the number one thing in your toolbox. Any kind of issue that you might run into in winter driving can be mitigated with some patience, 
with a little bit of a slower approach and just ensure that you're doing what you can to keep space around yourself and to keep the road safe for yourself and for fellow road users. Well, thanks a lot, Lewis, for taking some time to talk to me. It's great to get some insight from you today. Oh, my pleasure, Jace. Thanks very much for having me. Appreciate it.